How about <clears throat> Harada Roshi's famous statement, enlightenment is capable of endless enlargement, which startles so many people. He was a Zen master from the late 19th, early 20th century, and that was it's in Three Pillars of Zen. Right, well, you could see that uh, the contrary position has a kind of pedagogical value, saying, yes, enlightenment is something for you to shoot for. It is a thing to be experienced. And one is, once it's experienced, the heavens open and the sandalwood manifests and the, you know, the, the, and the jewels uh, in all of their facets begin to rain down from the heavens. Um, and so that can kind of give you the, uh, you know, the, the courage and the, um, the chutzpah and the vim mm. to actually do mm. the practices that, as we've repeated, one needs to do, right? right? As long as there is a doer there, as you have said, yeah. something needs to be done. Right. Um, but uh, it can also lead to this trap of thinking that there is such a thing as a moment that is at which one is done once and for all. Uh, and instead, this notion of the endless enlargement mm -hmm. uh, is, in fact, wonderful news. Oh, absolutely. I, I think mo many people take it to be negative news because they think, oh, I'm never going to be done with all of this uh, stuff, as opposed to when you really start to open, the fact that really what you've engaged on is this endless adventure filled with continual surprise is the best of all possible news. Yeah, as you come across, <clears throat> across obstacles, too, on the path, uh, it's like, oh, oh, I'm enlightened. I shouldn't be having this obstacle. I must have, I must have done something wrong. Yeah, I, excuse I, me. Um, I, I need to go I, back. Obstacle, I don't think you quite understand <laughs> who, you're talking who, to. who you're talking to here. Like, you know, the hat, yeah, you know, the yeah, various yeah, halos. Yeah, uh, yeah. You are clearly intended for someone else. Yeah. It's like, well, no, I'm here. Uh, I am a problem yeah. in your awareness. Uh, and I think sometimes if we have achieved some uh, some progress, if then something happens, mm, I must that wrong. It, it must all be false, mm -hmm. or I must have done something wrong, I must have sinned, and oh, I had it, and now it is gone. What am I going to do to get it? i got to get it back, right? Yeah. Um, as opposed to saying, ooh, welcome, guest uh to the you know the house uh, uh of being welcome yeah. uh what is it that regret has to teach me right. today what is it that remorse has to teach me today what is it that joy has to teach me today as long as there's somebody there to experience an obstacle then the obstacle is a gift right well as, we, as we've uh, seen it seems as if the obstacles either they become more apparent or they do get more difficult. I mean, if we have this anthropomorphized version of universal consciousness as something that's trying to awaken itself or herself, then perhaps she just keeps doing more and more difficult challenges. But it seems like uh, the ante keeps going up and you keep getting deeper and deeper. I mean, the more difficult the obstacles are that you face and the more uh, you come into them and be present with them, we talked before, the deeper and more still the whole thing appears to get. So uh, there is this ongoing enrichment in which it does, even though it's still, you think it can't get any better. There's nothing you could possibly bring in that would improve it or take away that, need, that would improve it. But yet at the same time, it does get deeper and more still and more quiet and sweeter. And so the things keep coming up. They keep getting met, dealt with, and the thing does get deeper and deeper. And and, and more beautiful somehow. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. And so this... Uh, this idea of the obstacle as a gift has been really useful in my own uh, yeah. experience. Well, sometimes the obstacles, uh, people first start meditating. They say, oh, this meditation is horrible. I have all these things that come up. And, oh. They just weren't looking before. Yeah. Now they're looking. But this is after, this is further on down the road where you start getting clearer and clearer and clearer. And you look around the pond and there's a little, there are a few bumps here and there. Important to remember that we have 50 trillion to 100 trillion synaptic interconnections. If only 10% of those have anything to do with what we're talking about, you're still looking at trillions, three, five, eight trillion 
synaptic interconnections. Thank God they don't become unwired all at once. Yeah. <laughs> there is a there is a when they do, there's a problem. There's I a think. problem. You know, it's a gradual process of you know going deeper and deeper. And I and I believe that's what's happening, is that these neural networks that are blocked up these old stories and old memories and fears and pains and desires begin to unravel. <clears throat> and as they do, then things improve and real estate's freed up. The brain seems to be parsimoniously inclined, so it goes around hunting for real estate that's not being used. And if these haven't been used as a big rocket there, the brain says, well, do you care about this thing? And so it cleans these things out over a long course of time. And things that you hadn't even thought of for maybe decades mm -hmm. pop up. You say, mm -hmm. well, what did I possibly do to cause that thing to pop up? And you didn't do anything. There was nobody doing anything. The brains run the whole process, and the brains has found some real estate that's not be, it's not being used. And it says, "You know about this thing? You care about this thing?" Mm -hmm. And then you meet that. Don't take the over on the package we discussed, and it goes away. And it and it feels because the sweetness continues. It feels like, the, as you put it, the ante is up, right? So it's like, okay, so we've dissolved all of these uh, places where you seems to have have had attachment to. X, Y, and Z. Oh, here's Z prime. <laughs> yeah. How, how are you going to deal with Z prime? And you say, but I already dealt with X, Y, and Z. Yeah. But if you say, oh, yeah, actually, wow, I forgot all about yeah. Z prime. I didn't even know Z prime was yeah. an issue for me. I guess yeah. that's because X, Y, and Z were in the way. And yeah, let me see who sent a Z prime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To whom is it addressed? No, thanks. Yeah. Right. <sighs> right. Yeah. And it can feel like the ante is up, I think, upped because there does seem to me to be something more almost primal and maybe even developmental about some of those ones that were below our threshold of awareness right. before right. is that, you know, I've had experiences where I um, realized that I was experiencing, not in a kind of reenactment way, but that I was dealing with the trauma of breaking my legs when I was two and a half years old. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea still, that that was even in there. Still hanging around. Yeah. But it was the same kind of thing. I was like, oh. Yeah. Well, you know, legs feel great. These things I have attached to having broken my legs, yeah. is it still useful? I mean, it, they're not useful anymore. No. They're stories from long ago. Yeah. And what your grandma thought about you playing soccer or whatever. Yeah. Oh, let's not get into that. <laughs> that doesn't matter. It just so doesn't matter. Yeah. And so this let go, let go, let go. Could you let go of this thing? And yeah. you're only hanging on to it because you think it has some kind of protective value. Yeah. In fact, it doesn't. It's something that's never going to happen again. It's, it didn't even happen to you. No, exactly. <laughs> so. Endless enlargement. Endless enlargement. Hi, kitty. <laughs>